Broadsword calling Danny Boy. Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Artalian TV. Today we're, we're having another game of Interplanetary I Spy, and we're going right back to when the rover landed on Mars uh, back in 2012. And we're going to look at set 3 to 13, or particularly set 13, taken by the Curiosity. Now, I've got it up here, set 13, on the GPL NASA website. And you've got a load of selfie sort of shots here of the of the equipment and stuff, and then there's quite a few from the of the background, and then there's a bunch when you scroll down here um, of the foreground. Okay, now I'm going to show you it here. Now this is the Gigapan site. Now all the links will be to these uh, pages in the description, so you can check any of these quite easily. Just click on the link and it'll take you straight to where I'm looking now. Now, I'm going to zoom out of this. Now, this, <laughs> this is the sheep's head. Now, I first published this um, a year ago. And uh, I thought I'd just show everyone how easy it is to find this. Because this is one of the easiest anomalies to find on Mars. Because it's so close to the rover. And this is the Gigapan site. I'm just going to zoom right out. Okay. Here we are. Now, this is Sol 13. Now, this is where the Curiosity landed, and it's literally started filming straight away, and you can still see here, see this patch here, this is where the, the rover disturbed the dust on the surface as it came in to land, and there's another patch over here, to the left, where it disturbed the dust, and a lot of the dust got blown away as it came in. And as it did that, it uncovered this guy. Now you can see how close this is to the rover. This is the rover here, obviously. And you just look straight above it, and there is what looks like a sheep's head, or sheep's skull, or some kind of uh, maybe an antelope, or sheep, or goat, or some kind of what we would call a sheep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now it shouldn't be there, like a lot of things on Mars, it should not be there. Now, also, there are some other interesting things in this image, and many of these have been published before by me and other people, including this huge bone over here. Now, this looks to be um, a fossilised bone of some kind of creature. Now, I've done I've done a video on this about a year ago or so, back in January 2013, no, 2014, sorry. Uh, and this could be a... a a, a bird's but um, a fossilized bird bone or a dinosaur bone or or couldn't tell you but it certainly looks like a bone it's, it's bone shaped and it has what looks like part of the joint there this could be a femur bone it could be uh any type of bone really uh, a, a limb bone of some sort and there's also this drum type thing which has appeared in in many uh videos that people have uh made over the last year or two and that's also quite interesting. It looks like some sort of drum or, or rock with some sort of face carved into it. We'll have a closer look at these in a minute. But this is a great image. I mean, this is literally a day or two after the, the rover landed. And this is the first proper panoramic, large pan, one of the first panoramics that they took or put together after landing. So you can see in the background, uh, the mountains in the background. On the, on the left here and when you scroll to the right you can see Mount Sharp up here okay and you can you can find quite a few things in here now most of these are just rocks in the foreground of course um, but there are in the background there is the boat that I found up here as well somewhere um, just here there he is that's the boat with the number plate on the front now you can't get very close to it on Gigapan here because it's it's this is right at the back of the image, um, and it only lets you zoom in so far. But the Gigapan is good, and you're better off clipping images from the Gigapan than you are from NASA's so-called raw images because the raw images, like we have here, when you download them, aren't of very good quality, and they've been resized and, and compressed, and have lost some data and are a bit grungy. Uh, these these aren't too bad. Now this this sheep's head or whatever it is, 
actually is, is a whole bunch of images here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think it's 14. No, there's 14. Okay, so there's at least 14 images of this thing. And this is the best one here. I'll click on that. And uh, we'll zoom in and have a look. Um, there he is. Just here. And this is the, so say, raw image. We'll go in closer and get the full size. Now, I've already downloaded this, and I've got it up in my graphics processor here. And I've cropped it out of the image. Now, this is from the NASA website, this one, which is more sort of a pukey brown color, like most of the so-called raw images are supposed to be. But when you zoom in, it's a bit grungy, and it gets very pixelated, as you can see. So if you actually clip it from the Gigapan site, instead using some sort of image clipper you get a you get a sharper image so you can actually zoom in and get more detail um, so I'm, I'm actually using the gigapan a lot more now because the, the quality on the whole is better i'll, I'll um i'll just select that and we'll, we'll, we'll enhance that area let's see what we can do let's just muck around with the contrast a little bit i'm not going to do too much of this because it doesn't actually need a lot well, that's the wrong one it doesn't actually need a lot of um enhancements because it's already quite clear and you can clearly see an eye here and let's sharpen that a little bit uh, let's go to adjust sharpen it. let's just sharpen it more and there we go now well, I don't want to sharpen it too much because it will deteriorate but you can see an eye here just here now how if this is a sheep's head and it certainly looks like one because it has a pointed nose here and it has a mouth here and you can just about make out down here some teeth I don't know if you can see that I'll have to brighten that up to to um to actually show those but it's clearly got an eye and part of the neck sticking out the back here and part of an ear by the looks of it sticking out the back and when you get in close you can actually see what looks like some sort of hair on top here the texture it looks like hair or wool or whatever you want to call it um, so there you go. I mean, that's how simple it is to find stuff. And I'm amazed that no one else spotted this and no one else has published it as far as I know. Uh, when it's right in front of the rover and it was shot almost the minute after they landed. Uh, and this can be, this is also the case with lots of the other images um, early on. They seem to be better quality than the more recent ones. Um, and clearer and, and a bit sharper. And this is apparently before they even configured the camera properly. So what they actually did to the camera to make it worse, I don't really know. Um, so so that they, maybe they just deliberately uh, are obfuscating the images, as many people have suge uh, actually suggested. Um, so there we are. There's there's the clip from, from the, the NASA website here, where I've clipped it out. And that's been, I had nothing done to it. That's completely raw. And this is the one. Now, this has already been white balanced by NASA, which is why it's a different color. It's not quite so, so, uh, orange, um, but it, it looks a lot clearer. So there you go. There he is. And I'll show you the um, the original video. Oh, hang on. That's the wrong thing I just selected there. Sorry about that. Um, here's the original video, which was published on my site initially uh, in January 2014. I'll let that play a little bit just to show you. But basically, that you can also find it on this one here. This is, this, uh, da -da, let's, let's go back and look. PIA one six zero five one, which I think is the same image that we've got here. Uh, on yeah, it's basically the same image. Um, okay. So yeah, how did they miss it? It's right in front of the rover. Now, it <laughs> being right next to this lighter patch of, of dust here it's this may have been actually largely buried in in sand before the rover landed and and the sand could have blown and dust could have blown off of this thing uncovering it so this may well have been buried uh which could explain it, its good state of preserve um as the rover came in the blast the blast area cleared the dust uncovering these rocks and, and odd things and this 
skull. Now the question is, how long has it been there? It looks pretty fresh. It looks like it's only been sitting there for probably a few years at top, or even a few months. But the problem is, we are told and uh, led to believe that there's very little moisture on Mars, which is not true actually. In this particular area, uh, it, near the equator is very dry. And like this other um, possible sheep's head or skull or whatever it is here, um, from the, this is from a different uh, area. Uh, if there is only a, a small percentage of oxygen, 0.2% uh, oxygen on Mars, like there's supposed to be, and there's very little moisture in this particular area, then these things would freeze dry because it gets very cold at night and preserve properly for thousands of years. Um, if you if you go to if you look if you Google Don Juan Pond Pond in Antarctica and or or Google mummified seals Antarctica, um, you will you will see pictures and you can go on my site oratalian.net and, and look this up. Uh, there are seals in Antarctica that have been found and, and carbon dated at over six thousand years old and are in perfect state of preservation because basically there it's so dry. Um, and cold that they, they are literally freeze dried and and just lie on the surface for thousands and thousands of years before they eventually get eroded by the wind. Um, now we're told that Mars is quite windy. I don't actually think it is particularly windy in Gale Crater. I haven't seen any real evidence of of, um, of any wind down there. Um, we have seen pictures of, of uh, twisters on Mars, that sort of thing. But that's on the surface of Mars. This is not the surface of Mars. This is subsurface. This is a long way down. This is four and a half kilometers down. This has its own microclimate. It's probably very warm down there because of geothermal activity. It's dry on the surface, but just below the surface there is water because it's low in the water table. And probably at certain times of year it will get quite damp down there. And there is a riverbed at the bottom of Mount Sharp. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the, that the conditions are absolutely perfect for this kind of preservation. And this would explain why these are so well preserved. Um, the other option is, of course, is that they are fresh, which means that these creatures only died very recently. Now, that could be 100 years, it could be 1,000 years, it could be 10,000 years, it could be 10 million years. We really don't know. But, but looking at the state of the preservation of these um, specimens, um, they don't look fossilized. This is not a fossil. This is a fresh skull or, or head of a creature with, st with fleshy material still on it. And you can even see the teeth here and, and flesh around the nose. I mean, this looks kind of wrinkled and sort of freeze dried like, like you would expect it to be. Um, let's, let's darken that a little bit more. Let's get some more out of that. And I'll, I'll, I'll use the sharpen tool on it. So, I mean, anybody's guess really as to how old this thing is. Uh, it really could be only a few years old, or it could be many thousands of years old. I'm guessing it's um, <laughs> not that old. I mean, look at the eye detail. You can even see a pupil here in the middle, the dark bit in the middle. I mean, for that level of preservation to, to, to be on, on, a, on a specimen, it would have to be really quite fresh. And I would say less than 10,000 years old, depending on whether the conditions are, are what we're told they are. So there we go. I won't sharpen it too much because it, it would just get a bit stupid if I do. Um, let's blur it a little bit just to, uh, just to um, take that back a little bit. Uh, the tool. No, no, that doesn't really help much. But you get the idea. Basically, it looks like a sheep's head. And in my book, if something looks like something, and it has an eye in it and ear and nose in the same place, um, then it's probably what we're looking at. It's probably exactly what we're looking at. Um, okay, people people have argued uh, about this and said, well, why would there be um, here's the image in, in here. This is the, the downloadable version of it from the from the Mars rover site. Um, 
No, where, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this a minute. Here we go. So I'll have all these, I'll put all these links in the description, and you can check out my other ones. Now, what, if you if you just t type in sheep's head skull on the uh, on Google or Yahoo, or whatever, then my video image comes up. <laughs> sheep's head Mars. There it is. And uh, if you compare it to some of the the other sheep, I'm look at the nose here. And then look at this nose. It's still even got that little black sort of bit at, at the front. And look at the eye. The eye is extremely similar. Um, and it, it, the morphology is almost identical to some types of sheep we have on Earth. So it does beggar the question whether DNA is prevalent throughout the universe and that all, all the creatures on Earth are... are um, all the DNA is kind of almost pre-programmed and, the, and these creatures we will find everywhere. Who knows? Either that or somebody may have brought some domestic animals from Mars to Earth or possibly the other way around. Um, we have absolutely no idea. This is pure speculation, of course. But there, I mean, if you look on my site, there are a whole bunch of these. I've got about four. I've got a ram skull with horns. I've got this one here, which looks like a type of antelope or, or goat or something. Um, there's no horns on this one, but they may have broken off. I have found antlers. I found all sorts of animal skulls and not, and lots of other people have as well so there we go i mean there's the initial video I'll, I'll, I'll put some extra little clips of these right at the end of the video but i thought i'd redo this because i found a much higher quality clip or or, or uh, image of the same area and basically it's a very good specimen it's one of the best you'll see um sorry about that there we go i mean look at the eye detail that, that is an eye. It has a pupil. Um, this looks like fleshy material, and this nose and, and mouth look quite convincing. I'll, um, I'll undo some of those steps where I sharpened it. And I'll, I'll just brighten it right up and see if we can see those teeth at the bottom there. I don't know. They're in shadow, these teeth, so they're not really going to come out too well. I'm really going to have to push that. There we go. You can just about make out some teeth here at the bottom. Uh, obviously, it's uh, it partially buried, but it's been largely uncovered by the rover itself landing right next to it. So there we go. Um, OK, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll, oh, hang on a minute. I'll, I'll just um, I'll just show you these other things I've got up here quickly. So I want, I want to keep this real short. We've had a look at it and let's have a, a little closer look at the the drum here okay here we go sorry my phone's going <laughs> ignore that let's quickly sharpen this up and see what we can get out of that okay uh, wrong one uh, let's go in dark yeah it's going quite dark and let's sharpen it a little bit uh, sharpen tool I mean, this is interesting. It's a very unusual shape. It's shaped like a drum, and it seems to be sitting on something. I mean, it may be nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go over these and, and put some enhanced versions of these at the end of the video for you. Um, and do check out my older videos I'm from about a year ago. If, you, if I get them up on here, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, here we go. We've got the sheep's head. That's January last year. Dinosaur leg bone, January last year. The rod anomaly is also in this image, but it's not in this exact image. It's in the next image. The rod is right over to the far right of the uh, of the source image. Um, it's right. This blackened out area here. It's right here, over here. So you'll have to probably go to one of the next souls to find that uh like soul 15 or something and the rod is right over that side so there we go there there's a whole bunch of these things that they've, they've been found from the word go and it's only really now that people are starting to take notice of these finds for some reason um we've had a lot of stuff published in the in the in the national press i've been in the been in the press uh, a lot fairly recently back in november and and september last year um so the subject is becoming mainstream now and there are less and less people saying it's just rocks up there so 
you know, if something looks like a skull and it has teeth, this thing even has lips. It has teeth just in here. It has an eye here. A nice jawbone is cracked where here, where it's probably sort of semi-fossilized or whatever. It's unusual because it's alien, of course, but um, it doesn't look that alien to me. It looks Earth-like. And it bears the question, why? Why do these things look like they are on Earth? Not because they're on Earth, but because perhaps some of our DNA and some of our creatures, and perhaps even us, may have been brought from Mars in the, in the very distant past and in a, in a sort of Noah's Ark type way, could have, the DNA could have been brought here. And a lot of our domestic animals may well be related to some of these. And we may well be related to the ancient Martians. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, folks. Thanks for watching, everybody. Another game of Interplanetary I Spy. I'll see you soon.